can see it. We can see it. Okay. You can great. see it. Okay. Okay. So today I'm going to speak on heterogeneous integration roadmap, a roadmap for a system of the future. COVID-19 is changing the world. Uh, let me see how I can move my slide. Yep. COVID-19 is changing our world. As we continue through this pandemic, we are seeing enormous infection rates and immense tra tragedy, including loss of life and livelihood. This pandemic, we salute the incredible heroism, sacrifice, and resilience being demonstrated every single day. Over the past years, many of us have learned how to work from home, virtual platforms, through electronic products, electronic systems, just like what we are doing today. Very important with the accelerated advancement of both virus science resulting in rapid vaccine rollout. Testament to the spirit of global collaboration and shared goals. With the vaccine increasing across the world, we hope for a brighter future, a new normal. We are at the beginning of the end of Moore's law, and it's important for all of us to work together to continue the pace of progress of electronics as we have over the past 56 years. We're entering a period of technology chaos driven by unprecedented level of discovery and innovation. CMOS scaling is no longer driving the pace of progress. The IT arrest is over and the world is, is evolving in ways that we have never imagined before. This is a slide of the world's 10 largest public companies by market capitalization. The Economist magazine one of the former business magazines in 2016 had an article about comparison between 2006 and 2016. And they show that in 2006, the first tech companies, Microsoft, is one of the 10 of the top 10. In 2016, the article in Economist show that there is four companies that are what we call 10 largest public companies, Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon. But look at 2020, we have eight companies that what we would call 10 companies. Within that eight companies, one of the company is Tesla. Tesla, people talk about, is just a computer on wheels. And then look at another company there, TSMC. TSMC is a company that provides semiconductors that make all the other eight companies that are tech companies to be able to communicate, to be able to build their business around them. Semiconductor, therefore, is extremely important for us. Why this is so? because there is a digital transformation of this global economy and data is the new oil. So this slide, what we show is a slide from John Hennessy. John Hennessy is the chairman of Alphabet. And in this slide, he presented at the DARPA ERR conference on July 23rd, 2018. In this slide, what he showed is that between 1986 to 2003, the progress in processor performance is increasing at 52%, 52% a year, 52% a year. Between 2006 and 2015, the increase is at 23 and then 12%. And then after 2015, it is almost flat. That is to say that the process in processing performance has slowed significantly. 
to almost flat. The next slide is a, come from a presentation by AMD CEO Lisa Su. She gave the talk at the DAPA ERR conference on July 15, 2019. And in that slide, she showed that the cost, that, that if, she showed that more slow economics is meeting severe headwind. What she's shown is that costs continue to increase in terms of cost per yielded die for the 250 millimeter square. So increasing die size, therefore, is economically problematic. Moore's law economics is really having difficulties moving forward. The third slide I want to show is from John Schauf. John is from the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, and he gave a talk called Computing Beyond Small's Law at the International Supercomputer Conference on June 18, 2019. What she is showing is what the two uh, people have shown previously, that they show that although the transistor count continue to increase, the performance as measured by thread performance, clock frequency, power and core are all flattened out. And she asked the question, as that scale in 2021, and then what? So obviously what we are looking at is how do we find a way out? How do we find a way to go forward? So let's go back to 1991, the technology roadmap technology roadmap, what we call RTRS. In 1991, the world's first open source technology roadmap, the National Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors, NTRS, was sponsored by the United States U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association. But by 1998, NTRS expanded Europe, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, joined U.S semiconductor um, association. So the, the, the roadmap that is formed, sponsored by five countries, semiconductor association, it is called the International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors. In 2014, the benefit of Moore's law scaling diminished and decision was made by SIA together with the other partners to end RTRS. The last edition of RTRS was published on July the 8th, 2016. In March, 2015, the RTRS's Hydrogenous Integration Focus Team signed an MOU with the IEEE CPMT Society to initiate the formation of the Hydrogenous Integration Roadmap. And this roadmap was formed with initiative from three IEEE societies, Electronics Packaging Society, Electronic Devices Society, Photonic Society, together with SEMI and ASME Electronics and Photonics Packaging Division. The purpose is to maintain the pace of progress needed for electronic system today and tomorrow by integration of separated manufacturer component into a high level assembly that provides enhanced functionality and improved operational characteristics. It is dedicated to enhance, to embrace innovation wherever it arises and promote collaboration wherever possible to accelerate progress in this microelectronics landscape. Now, how is hydrogen integration defined? As you can see in this picture here, is that you have dye from one fab, dye from another fab, maybe a different node, maybe some passives, some MEF, MEMS, et cetera, all put together into a single SIP. So it is heterogeneous integration by materials, component types, circuit types, nodes, and bonding and interconnection method, and very importantly, from different sources. So, so here we show an SIP module 
that has different enabling technologies, which we will discuss later, shielding, TSV, interconnections, antenna, all the other things that come together for our semiconductor packages. Our, our business is driven by market. So market applications in this digital transformation is very important. So we identified six markets that are the leading important markets. So we call it IoT to IOE, smart mobile everywhere, data to the cloud and data centers, autonomous vehicles, wearable and health. We are not going to any, have any applications that is left behind. Now I want to bring back to look at the different technical working groups. And so we have the market applications, which is high performance computing, mobile, medical and health and wearables, automotive, IoT, and aerospace defense, the six ones we talked about. Then we have hydrogen integration components. We have part of the building block for our systems, single chip, multi-chip, photonics, power, beams and sensors, RF and mixed signals, cross-cutting topics, materials, emerging devices, test, supply chain, security, and thermal management, and integration process, SIP 2D plus 3, 3D plus 2D, and co-design and simulation. These are the basic building block for us for the, for the roadmap, and each of those have a technical working group responsible for the chapter in the roadmap. The roadmap committee, I'm the chair, and uh, Bill, Dr. Bill Bottoms, chairman of CMTS is co-chair representing EPS, Professor Sebo Ayer representing EDS, Professor Amal Helmy, chair professor at, at University of Toronto representing photonics, and SEMI is represented by Tom Salmon, and uh, ASME EPPD is represented by Ravi Mahajan, Intel Fellow, and ASME EPPD alternative, we have Gamal Rafael Amit, Distinguished Engineer at Stalinx. We have a Global Advisory Council, Ajay Manocha, President and CEO of SEMI. Previously, he was Chairman of Chairman and the CEO of Global Foundry. And then we had Nikki Liu, founder and chairman of Itro Technology in Taiwan, and Babak Sabi, Intel Corporation Vice President, General Manager for Assembly Test Technology Development, and Professor Herbert Lechner, the Board of Directors Chairman for Fraunhofer Microelectronics Group and Founding Director of Fraunhofer Institute of Photonics in Dresden, Germany. So we have a Global Advisory Council in Europe, Asia, and US. Now, the first edition of the roadmap was released in October 10th, 2019. Let me read off to you, let me read off to you the, uh, a part of the uh, re press release. It's a hygienist integration roadmap. It's a roadmap for the future of electronics, identifying technology requirements and potential solutions. The primary objective is to stimulate pre-competitive research and collaboration across industry, academia, and government to accelerate progress. The roadmap offers professional industry, academia, and research in a comprehensive strategic forecast and technology over the next 15 years. The roadmap is available for download and uh, you can come to the Electronic Packaging Society website or the SEMI website and they are available for download for free. As of today, uh, I should say as of December 31st, uh, last year, there has been download for 30,000 downloads as today. 
and we welcome you to download the roadmap for free. The roadmap, we have conferences and workshops and webinars. As you can see, we have conferences in East Coast of US, in Asia, and uh, in Europe, and, uh, it, and many different conferences over the years. We also provide webinars and uh, um, we, we have webinars that covers the different chapters and these webinars are also available for, for download and also these webinars are free. Now, I would like to sh show you on the bottom left of the slide, we have a fourth annual meeting and workshop coming up on February 24th and 26th, and the registration is available at the Electronic Packaging Society chapter in Santa Clara, and uh, there you can also register to come to our annual meeting and workshop for free. So I want to share some innovations and heterogeneous integration through system and package. Everything is changing. Maintaining the pace of progress will require new materials, new device types, new systems, architectures, and innovation design costs, and time to market and security. You can see that what we are showing in our roadmap in terms of integrated photonics, AI and co-design, photonics, uh, sensors, chiplets, plasmonics, all the important innovations that is crucial for us going forward. Here's an example of heterogeneous integration. On the left is a slide. On the left is a slide um, from the um, uh, AMD's uh, EPIC processor. This is a large die split into four chaplets at 14 nanometers tightly coupled. The next generation are four groups of two chaplets on each side of the larger IO die at 14 nanometers, are the, while the uh, uh, smaller eight dies on each side, these are seven nanometers. So this shows a first generation, a second generation of AMD's EPIC processor. And this is part of uh, Lisa Su's presentation uh, on July 8, 15, uh, 2019. Another example is Intel's embedded multi-die interconnect bridge. This is a product that Intel has been shipping. That's the uh, Intel's Agilex FPGA chiplet uh, application. You could see that the connection is made by the embedded uh, silicon bridge called EMIB. This is the previous slide from AMD and this slide if, from Intel are both hydrogenous integration in production. Smartphones leads in the uh, system and package implementation. So on top, on the th three examples here is the Apple's A12 processor on a package on package. This is a wafer level packaging um, POP. And in the middle, Samsung. And in the bottom, Huawei. These are both uh, advanced POP packages used in the smartphone. And they are also well known as being in production today. So this is uh, the next is the DAPA chip, chips program. And uh, so DAPA has a uh, program that wants to put together custom chiplets and commercial chiplets so that the, uh, there would be a rapid integration of functional blocks at the chiplet level. So this is presented by Andrea Olofsson at the Semicon West July 10th of last year. 
in his talk, Extending Moore's Law Through Heterogeneous Integration. Ah, so what we have here is the Samsung Galaxy 10. What you see is the uh, uh, teardown of the module, and you see the 5G modules. And uh, if for each of the for each of the uh, phone, you could see that there is three millimeter wave antennas, and uh, on, on the on the edge, and also on other side, because you need to be able to have a good reception without having to have your hand or maybe uh, some other materials that would be uh, blocking the antenna. So this is a fan out of Mojitech stack integration that is from TSMC at the ECTC, at the, EC, show me, at the ECTC conference 2019. That is a fan out Mojitech integration. Another very good example of memory and SOC um, integrated together. This is a fan out chip on substrate for the multi-chip integration. This is the hybrid module of 16 nanometers, 20 nan 28 nanometers using high density IDL to uh, link them together. These are IDL three layers at uh, uh, line of space two two. Another example, 2.5D with silicon interposers integrating high band, high band with memory together with processor. And uh, this would be comparing how do we have from the traditional flip chip to the, um, from traditional flip chip to the uh, uh, TSV. You could see that in this case, the, uh, on the silica interposers, the line of space is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Emerging medical devices technology at this time of uh, the pandemic, we are very much aware of how semiconductors might be important for us on the wearable device technology. And one of our uh, technical working group, one of our chapters is medical health and wearables. It showed different ways that the electronic packaging capabilities are being implemented in the medical uh, devices that would help us in health and help to keep us safe. Silicon photonics, a co-package integration. This is the slide from, um, from John Schaaf in his presentation. And uh, what he showed is a schematic of how he sees the future of co-package could work in terms of um, integration. So this is a silicon photonics integration co co uh, concept. And I think it is the same type of, of uh, um, ideas that are going to be implemented into, into the future. This is in chapter nine of our roadmap integrated photonics. At the, uh, at the uh, uh, presentation on the uh, um, 2019 uh, Semicon West, the uh, uh, Cliff Young at Google presented three generations of the Google's tensor processor unit. You can see from left to middle and the right. What he showed is that the key element for maintaining progress is to use increasing power of available ICs, a judicious integration with available ICs and innovations of the main path and truly use co-design. And he felt that deep learning has invigorated the the hardware.
Now, how, what do we envision to be the future? At the SIA, SIA, SRC report on March 30th, 2017, he said that the path forward is not as clear as was during the Moore's Law era. However, the enormous potential for economic and societal benefit, some that I envisioned and some that are not yet Im imagined. How do we reap the benefit of what SIA and SRC talk about, the economic and societal benefit? Alan Key, computer scientist, what he said was the best way to predict the future is to prevent it, is to invent it. And Philip Wong at the ERR Summit plenary last year, he, what he said is the future is system integration. Hydrogenous integration plays right into what all these three people have said. The hydrogenous integration roadmap is maintain the pace of progress needed for a complex electronic system today and today and tomorrow by hydrogenous integration through SIP. The goal is to promote innovation and collaboration to accelerate the progress in a microelectronics landscape. We are today at the convergence of technology chaos, business disruption, compounded by the COVID-19 global pandemic crisis. There's immense need for a pre-competitive technology roadmap for future vision, difficult challenges, and potential solutions. Hydrogen integration through SIP is a powerful technology direction for system integration to accelerate progress for the advancement of technology to benefit humanity. The roadmap is for everyone, for you and me together. I'd like to quote a quote from a speech from, um, from President John Kennedy. He said that we choose to go to the moon in this decade. I'm sorry, let's just get back. Professor John Kennedy on September 12, 1962 at Rice University. He was talking about the moonshot in, at the, in 1962. He said, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one they're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and that others too. I think in that spirit is the spirit of heterogeneous integration roadmap. It is a collaboration of many people, many volunteers working together, many volunteers in the technical working group, and we work together so that we so that we could do it for the benefit of our profession, benefit of our industry, and benefit for society. So thank you very much for listening. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for the wonderful speech. And uh, we have uh, uh, collected some questions from our audiences. So here is, uh, um, yeah, we, can, we have a five minute uh, Q&A session uh, for, for Bill. So the first question uh, we have is, what are the major technical uh, challenges for heterogeneous integration? Well, we have actually quite a different challenges on either on the personal level or on the um, people level. The most important challenge would be on how do we make the hydrogen integration roadmap truly valuable for our community, for our profession, for today and in the future. We see that also as a crimination tool, educational tool, so that we have a very complex 
ecosystem in our industry, in our supply chain. So the roadmap is important for us to bring the supply chain together on this common goal. The second is that how do we increase the depth of our working group working together so that we can have a best overlap between chapters for the reader to read. And personally, I see AI and uh, data analytics is here and now, and many of us, in myself included, need to educate ourselves because we believe AI and machine learning will be important for our roadmap. So three different, uh, different areas that we think are major challenges for us. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, you talked about a lot in, uh, in your talk, uh, in your speech on uh, chiplets, right? So the chiplet integration is, uh, uh, is the technology trained uh, in packaging, in semiconductor. So from your point of view, um, for Intel, AMD, Xilinx, their technology, uh, what do you say about their you know, advantages and shortcomings? Actually, for myself, I worked as a, I worked as a, um, a member of the R&D team, uh, actually, in, the, in Intel's um, uh, Agilix, Agilix uh, chipset. Uh, I was one of them. So I, I, I'd like to know, uh, what do you think about the uh, you know, advantages and pros and cons of the Intel, AMD, and Xilinx uh, chiplet uh, product? Ah, oh, that you put me right at the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think uh, uh, we have, we had in the uh, 2019, no, last year, where we had our, uh, where we have our um, meeting, we, um, I mean, annual meeting, we have uh, Intel to come and talk about chiplets. And we also have uh, Vivek Savi to, from ODSA to talk about chaplets. And, uh, and in February this year, we have AMD to come on the chaplets. My own belief is that in Intel, in AMD today, the chaplets that each of you are working on are working on the applications that you have on the interconnection method that you have. And uh, how do you do this, for example, uh, in terms of other applications that are difficult to say. I think chiplets is at the very early stage and how do you implement it on uh, laminate? How do you implement it on different platforms? They are all very specifically optimized for these different applications. So coming to our chiplet discussion on February 25th at 11 o'clock and uh, we will have a Zoom platform and we'll discuss it together. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. So uh, uh, my question, there's another question uh, about the wafer fan out because uh, for the SIP, uh, there is a fan out limitation today. And uh, so what are the uh, improvement status? I'm not sure this, if this is directly, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, related to your topic. Oh, it is, it is related because we have a oh. chapter. Oh. We have a chapter called wafer level packaging. And uh, we have a chapter wafer level packaging, which also includes the panel level packaging. In the, and also we have that chapter include fan in as well as fan out. So your question of what are the limitations or your, the equivalent limitations, is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yes, yes, the fan out limitations. And what is the improvement status? Oh, I think the, uh, I think that the limitations is because we are using equipment that is used not exactly to, uh, 
uh, how shall I say it? Not exactly designed for this specific wafer level fan out. It is really fab equipment used for the fabs. I think the materials are fab materials being used. I think the equipment, um, how should I say it? The equipment companies and materials companies will continue to develop um, equipment specifically for fan out. I think the idea of people that has say that they want to use panel level, the idea that people were talking about they want to develop fan out in different directions. Think about this fan out. When did we start to talk about fan outs? It's only about four years ago, five years ago. And so I think we as an industry need to think about a long term where the materials and the equipment all come together in, in doing the job that it would do. I think I could see equipment people already are being coming together and particularly, well, I do not want to name names at the point, but I would say that what very important purpose of the roadmap is to be able to say that this is the direction we are going. How do we develop the materials? How do we develop the equipment? And how do we make it so that it's most cost effective? And that design have to come in, reliability have to come in, quality have to come in. That is why we have 22 technical working groups because they all need to be able to communicate with each other in the way that our industry communicate with each other. Okay, thank you. I, so, have, I have great hope, optimistic that we are going there. Great, thank you. Yeah, so that's, I guess, that's what the, uh, the person who is asking uh, this question is uh, looking for. Uh, so the last question uh, for the Q&A here is besides the IC integration, what is the new demands for passive components in uh, heterogeneous integrations? You are speaking about something that uh, um, I feel passive is a long neglected areas for research. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I for one have been, have been very much uh, 